Good afternoon, everyone. This is the Joint Records and Public Safety and Public Services Committee. First item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next is the adoption of the, of the agenda on the motion to a job, please. So moved, Support, Support and sickle. I have a motion by Commissioner Hall, supported by Commissioner Farrington. Please vote. Motion passes 11 to zero. Thank you. I need the approval of the minutes and I'd like to have a motion to approve 4A and 4B, which would be joint internal services and the uh, RPS, please. Motion to approve Van Sickle. We have a motion by Commissioner Van Sickle and a support by Commissioner Wallace. Please vote. Motion passes 11 to zero. Thank you. Item five is public participation. Three minutes maximum per speaker related only to issues on the agenda. The first opportunity for public participation is for those who wish to speak for a maximum of three minutes on any item which is on today's agenda. The second opportunity for public participation is for those who wish to speak on any issue. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak at public participation for any items on the agenda? Hearing and seeing none, I'm going to close public participation. And I'm going to go to item number six, which is record and public safety department recommendations. Item A is a purchase, smart care equipment solutions, Macomb County Jail kitchen appliances in the amount of $118,156.40. We have Captain Lori Mish, who's going to explain to us why we're spending that money. Captain Mish. Motion to move the full board. Thank you. Support? Support center. Thank Support you. Center. I'm sorry, go ahead, Kat. Good afternoon, Chair. Good afternoon, Board. Uh, yes, in front of uh, you today, we would like to request the uh, purchase of kitchen appliances for the Macomb County Jail, ovens, a mixer, a uh, scale, and a steamer in order to prepare food in the kitchen. Uh, let's see what we have here. I see no speakers. Please vote. Motion passes 11 to 0. Thank you, Captain. Thank you. Uh, item B and C. Um, Intergovernment agreement amendment are made at Township Emergency Dispatch Services. $140,343. Uh, we have our dispatch operations manager, Elizabeth Bag uh, Bagos. Uh, I need a motion to recommend this to full board. She'd like to do Mr. item C along with that, which would be a budget amendment, sheriff's office, Armada Township Fire Department, dispatch services, $62,255. First, I need a motion to forward this. Motion to move to full board, Van Sickle. I have a motion by Commissioner Van Sickle and a, mo and a support by Commissioner Farrington. Um, Ms. Bagel, you're up. Good afternoon, board. Um, we are asking for um, a budget amendment for um, the Armada Township Emergency Dispatch Services. Um, the Board of Commissioners approved the contract with. Oh, oh I'm not on. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, the board has already approved the contract. Um, with the Public Safety Committee on the June 8th meeting. Um, I think it's the money is that what we're looking at exactly. The budget amendment is in the amount of $140,343. Um, it was originally presented by Dispatch Director Angela Elsie. Um, 
but that was just to include the purchase of the equipment. So the rest is, um, the equipment is $55,541.99 um, and an annual maintenance on the equipment in the amount of 50, I'm sorry, um, $13,425,000. Um, and that was only for 200, I'm sorry, 2022 only. Uh, didn't include the annual maintenance for 23 or 24. Um, and that was also, didn't include any of the personnel costs. So we're asking for the amendment in the amount of 143,343. Thank you. Again, I see no speakers. Please vote. Motion passes 11 to zero. Thank you. We'll go to item oh, okay. D and E. Uh, Commander Abro asked that we put them together. Command, uh, it's a contract commandment with the Village of New Haven Law Enforcement Services, $813,984. We need a motion to recommend this one to full board along with the purchase from Signature Ford, one Ford 2022 police interceptor vehicle for $48,304. Commander, you're up. So moved, Hall. Thank Support you, Hall. Van Sickle. We've been moved by Commissioner Hall and supported by Commissioner Van Sickle. Good afternoon, Chair. Uh, Board of Commissioners, uh, the Village of New Haven is requesting to add two additional uh, deputies to their complement and also purchase one vehicle for the remainder of 22, 23, and the year 24. Give me a minute, folks. Let me pull this back up. Commissioner Matuzic. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is sort of a general question. Uh, this is a request, obviously, from uh, a community in the county that we provide services to. They're requesting yes. two additional uh, deputies and all the sundry equipment that goes with this. Um, the last time the sheriff was here, the last time you were here, we've talked a lot about uh, the inability to find people being short-staffed. Um, I'm a little concerned we may be promising communities services that we maybe can't provide. Can you speak to that a little bit? I can tell you that the communities are priority number one, so are the schools, um, that we will do whatever we can to make sure that we pull assets or bodies to those communities. Obviously, the protection of the citizens and our public is, is number one, uh, so are the schools. We do have secondary services. We can always look at those arenas. Uh, if we had to fill uh, villages or towns or cities, uh, as well as the schools. I can tell you that we have eight deputies currently in the FTO program. I want to say between now and August, all eight will be released. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sure. I just, it's a concern I have. We, oh, absolutely. We have this ongoing discussion and about how to get more folks. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Commissioner. All right. I uh, see no other speakers. Please vote. Motion passes 11 to 0. Thank you. Uh, Commander Alvaro asked that items F, G, and H put together. First one is uh, contract amendment, Macomb Township Law Enforcement Services to Lands Crew Schools, $164,829. The item G is a contract amendment, same Harrison Township Law Enforcement Services to Lands Crew Schools, $164,829. And item H is agreement by Lance Cruz Public School District Law Enforcement Services, $329.64. I need a motion to move this to full board. So moved, Hall. Support Van Sickle. It's been moved by Commissioner Hall, supported by Commissioner Van Sickle. Commander, you're up again. Sure, thanks. Uh, the Lance Cruz School Districts, after um, numerous discussions, they are willing and asking that they replace security services now with law enforcement deputies uh, within their two high schools within our jurisdiction. Um, as you stated, the $329,654 that Lance Cruz would uh, pick up that portion of the tab to pay for two deputies for the remaining of 22, 23, and 24, and the Township of Harrison willing to uh, pitch in 50%, as well as the Township of Macomb willing to pitch in 50% for both school districts within their patrol areas. 
Thank you, Commander. I see no speakers. Please vote. Wrong. No, uh, what did I come? Hold on, let me get to it. A, B, C, D, E, F. Oh, Commissioner Hall, please. Thank you, Chair. I went to the last one. The contract reads Macomb Township is picking up 50% of the bill? That's correct. So one deputy will be assigned to Lance Cruz North, uh, which is in the township of Macomb. Oh, LHN. Okay, I thought you said something else. That's fine. Sure. I get it. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Brown? Uh, thank you, Captain. Uh, sorry for your loss of your fellow comrade in Detroit the other day. Uh, the amount of um, officers now being contracted to the schools, is that increasing and are there more in the pipeline? Can you tell us a little bit about that? I could. I know that Utica Community Schools have now all gone to, at least the high schools are now uh, contracted by their local communities, whether it be Sterling Heights or Shelby Township Police Department. Um, there also is now privatized security within the middle schools. Um, so yes, we are seeing that across uh, the state as well as across the country. Obviously not to highlight school shootings, but you can see that uh, um, what's transpired here recently. Um, the uh, implementation of law enforcement schools, it's, it's, it supplies a whole uh, wealth of information, knowledge, uh, experience compared to private security that's within the districts. So, in our county, um, how many of our school districts don't have that yet? I can only speak uh -oh. to our patrol, our patrol areas. I can tell you that the uh, Romeo now has uh, law enforcement services, uh, Macomb Township with uh, Dakota, uh, and now you see Lance Cruz being, whether it be Macomb Township or Harrison Township, now has law enforcement services. So within our patrol areas, I can speak to that, that almost every high school will have a, a deputy uh, within its uh, jurisdiction. Yeah, that's right. We, we don't cover the whole county. That's right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I see uh, Com Commissioner Zinner. Thank you, Chair. Um, Commander, when you said that the, um, these officers will be driving in the area of the schools, is that, is, I thought I heard you say that. So where will they actually be then? So each officer will be assigned to the school district itself mm -hmm. as far as each high school. So, for example, the Macomb Township deputy will be assigned to the school Monday through Friday whenever the school district needs that patrol officer. Uh, in the off-season, whether it be summer or summer school, the deputy will be assigned back to the township on road patrol services. So that is the agreement that the township is willing to make that some of the service will be utilized for township patrol and majority of it for the school district. Thank you. Thank you very much for that explanation. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Sabatini. Thank you, Chair. Hi, Commander. In regards to Macomb Township, so we have four school districts in Macomb Township. You said Utica Schools, uh, Dakota, Chippewa Valley, Lance Cruz now. Um, what about New Haven? Are they, do they have uh, their own private or? New Haven, I believe, is still in private, correct? Private. Okay. Yeah, but there is discussions. Uh, we have gone uh, in front of their council here. I think it was October or November. Um, so the two additional officers, uh, it, it was discussed to add additional patrols, but also uh, to look at the school district itself. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Seeing no other speakers, we're voting uh, on F, G, and H, please. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes records in public services. We'll move on to item 7, which now is Public Services Committee Department recommendations, and it'll be Mr. Farrington. Commissioner Farrington. Thank you, Commissioner. Moving on to Public Services Department recommendations 7A, budget amendment, plan economic development, the Michigan Strategic Fund. I'd like to ask for a motion to recommend to full board. Motion recommended full board. Sub Romano. Sub Romano Sub makes a motion for full board. Wallace uh, supports it. Vicki, welcome. Awesome, thanks, commissioners. Um, so in front of you is a budget amendment for a grant that we received through the Michigan Strategic Fund in the amount of 382,353. This grant will help support implementation of Industry 4.0 technologies for our businesses. Uh, it will be a competitive grant 
where businesses will apply and they can receive reimbursement on equipment up to 25000 Seeing no speakers, let's vote on it. Thank you, Vicki. Thank you. Have a great day. Motion passes 12 to 0. Next item is uh, we're going to combine 7B agreement with Red Run Inter County Drain Drainage District along with the cost share agreement with the Red Run Inter County Drain Board. Um, I'd like to have a motion re recommend a full board 7B and 7C combined. So moved, Hall. Moved by Hall. Support. Wallace. Support by Wallace. And I think we have Scott and John Shepka here. Either one of you want to speak on it? Um. <laughs> Don't all come running to the front. Unique choice. Welcome, John. Thank you. Never pass up a chance to talk. Uh, I can speak to item B. This is the uh, license agreement that allows the trail to be installed on county property adjacent to Red Run, just north of, a, of the water course and south of the big hill at, at uh, Freedom Hill. Uh, the overall trail project crosses property owned by Sterling Heights, Mishcon, and the county, and this represents a three-way deal. This is just the permission to occupy our land. It is not the funding element, which is the next item. Scott, no need to speak if no one has questions. Seeing no questions, let's vote. Right. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, John. Motion passes 12 to 0. Okay, we're going to move on to item 7D. This is the contract with Cipriani Contracting, Harper Avenue, 9 mile to 11 mile. I'd like to have a motion to recommend a full board. Matusik moves. Move. Moved by Wall, support by Matusek. Scott, welcome. Good afternoon, board. Uh, this is a request to approve the award uh, for the bid of the corresponding contract with uh, Cipriona Contracting for the project uh, to complete the concrete repairs in Harper Avenue from Nine Mile Road uh, to just north of Eleven Mile Road uh, at a cost of two million ninety-eight thousand ninety-two dollars and eighty-seven cents. Uh, costs which will be shared 50-50 uh, with the City of Sterling Heights, or I'm sorry, the City of St. Clair Shores, and funding available in the Department of Roads 2022 fiscal year budget. Thank you. Commissioner Zinner. Thank you, Chair. Um, Scott, the Jefferson Cruise is on August 31st, I'm told. Um, will, you, will your cruise be out of there by then, or will there be arrangements made? What does it look like? This project is set to uh, maintain traffic throughout the duration, which would mean that there would be one lane of traffic open uh, in each direction um, throughout the duration of the project. So while I cannot promise that the project will be completed, uh, there will be traffic maintained during that time frame. And this you think will go through to or end in November? Or what, do you have an expectation? Correct. We, uh, we have about two miles, uh, just shy of two miles worth of concrete patching. So uh, we're scheduled to begin beginning of August, sometime in August after this approval, hopeful approval today, uh, we can move forward with scheduling a pre-construction meeting with the contractor and, and get their schedule tied down. Do you know if you'll have a full crew working there or a partial crew? What, what's your expectation for that? It's all, it's all dependent on how many other commitments the contractor may or may not have at, uh, at that time. But we do, uh, we do keep them working continuously. Okay, I just, um, the word came up to try to see, make sure they can have their crews. It's very important to the shore as we know. If right. anything, I think people drive a little bit slower through there. So might be, uh, yes. might be better for taking the gander at the cars. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Commissioner Thank Van you, Sickle. Chair. Along the lines of Commissioner Zinner's question, um, is there any chance that, well, okay, um, does your contractor work on weekends when the crews would be? And is there any chance that we might specify 
not to work on the days of the cruise so that they don't, to eliminate confusion. I'm not saying unblock the lanes, but at least eliminate some of the confusion. We can, we can discuss that with them. We are going to be meeting with the city of St. Clair Shores, um, as well as, uh, like I said, meeting with the contractor as a pre-construction meeting beforehand, and we'll definitely discuss those items. Thank you for including that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, seeing no other speakers, please vote. Motion passes 12 to zero. Thank you very much. Going on to item 7E, this is the contract with MDOT, the 29 mile uh, over Salt River Bridge repair project. Um, I'd like to have a motion to recommend full board. Moved by Romano, supported by Wallace. Scott, please. Yep, uh, requesting approval for the contract with the Michigan Department of Transportation for the repair of the 29 mile road bridge over the Salt River at an estimated cost of $182,000 with 80% of the project being covered by federal funds and the remaining balance covered by the Department of Roads. Funding is available within this year's fiscal 2022 budget. Seeing no speakers, please vote. Motion passes 12 to zero. Thank you very much. We're moving on to 7F. This is the cost share agreement with Macomb Township, 23 mile from Heinrich to Romeo. Plank, if I could have a motion to recommend full board. Moved by Sabatini, support. Support. Support, support by Kraft, thank you, Scott. Okay. Requesting the approval of the cost share agreement outlining the cost participation between Macomb Township and the Macomb County Department of Roads for the reconstruction and widening of 23 mile road from Heidenrich to Romeo Plank at a total cost of $8,072,540. Um, this project is being done as a combination with the other uh, portion of 23 mile road from Card to Heidenrich as well to, to gain a uh, uh, economies of scale with, with the work to be done out there. Thank you. We do have a few uh, questions. Commissioner Sabatini. Thank you, Chair. This will be the last phase of this project, right, through 23? Correct. Um, how are we doing on costs? I know it's a big, it's a big one. Um, and this, I know the township has been having as other communities as far as bidding today and then tomorrow it's a different price. Um, we were just over approximately $300,000 over the engineer's estimate on this, so relatively close to what we had expected. Okay. Um, I guess I'll ask the same question for the next couple items that are big tickets here from Macomb Township. Is that consistent with the other ones as well? As far as Yep. All right, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Just following up on that $300,000 you said compared to the engineer's um, estimate, based on what total amount of the contract? So the overall total, I think, was um, was right around $15 million. Oh, okay. So not Correct. as significant as I might have thought. Correct. Chair Brown. Thank you. On a related topic, uh, what's the percentage of excess over the, what's an acceptable percentage over or under uh, the bids? Generally, there is, um, we can go approximately 10% before uh, we have to justify um, any, any reasoning to go beyond that uh, or discuss uh, rebidding those projects. Part of the cost you guys are crossing, you guys got to go over that bridge, right? There's a bridge there that's over. There's There are two two areas where we're going to be replacing. Uh, one is is considered a bridge, but it's it's basically a, uh, a culvert. four-sided culvert. Um, so we'll be replacing uh, two culverts within that stretch. Okay. Stopping just shy of the bridge uh, near Romeo Plank. Do we get any help with the state bridge program for those those bridge and drainage crossings over there? This, are those, are those eligible for the state critical bridge program? Uh, that is a separate program. Um, so it's it's kind of six of one, half a dozen of another. It's it you'll you'll get a better better product if you bid it out with the road project itself in this case. Okay. Um, when will they expect the time to be completed? 
We are anticipating starting later this fall. There's a long lead time for getting those box culverts, approximately 14 to 18 weeks. So the fact that we are starting now with getting the contract and everything in place will give the contractor time to order those, get the, the boxes hopefully installed later this fall, um, work on drainage work with sewers and temporary widening of the roadway, and then focusing next year on the primary paving operations. When I was first a commissioner in 1990, they started widening the road at 23 Mile Road in Van Dyke. It was a two lane road that went into four lanes. And the plan was we're gonna go all the way to 94. I've lived to see the day where it will happen. <laughs> this is that final piece, would. yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, seeing no other speakers, please vote. Thanks for reminding us how old you are. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you. We're going to combine, uh, at least I'd like to ask, combine 7G, H and I. This is the cost share agreement with Macomb Township Garfield Road from 22 to 25 Mile Road. Cost share agreement Macomb Township Garfield 24 to 25 Mile Road. And also, for procedural reasons, we have to rescind the board action of 2020-4618 dated March 26, 2020. Can I have a motion re to uh, recommend all three of them to the full board? So, so moved. Move Van Sickle. Oh. Moved by Van Sickle, supported by Haw. Thank you very much. Go ahead, Scott. Okay, so to kind of break this down, the, the first uh, portion, uh, item G, if you will, is uh, requesting uh, approval for the cost share agreement for the design and right of way costs uh, associated with the corridor of Garfield Road from 22 mile up to 25 mile road. Um, the initial uh, agreement, which will be uh, discussed later on to be rescinded, uh, or I'm sorry, that the initial design that was done for this uh, covered two of the three segments. So we are seeing um, an increase in cost for the remaining segments. Um, so that was different from that initial cost share agreement. So this is to basically amend and extend that uh, those design and right of way costs. Um, the second item, item H is, uh, requesting the uh, the approval for a cost share agreement outlining the cost participation uh, between Macomb Township and the Department of Roads for the construction phase of the project uh, at 24 mile from 24 mile to 25 mile at an estimated cost of four million seven hundred twenty thousand dollars to be shared between the township and the Department of Roads um, and in this the initial intent was to start at the southerly end at 22 mile and work that section from 22 mile to 23 mile. Uh, however, due to some right of way acquisition issues that's been delaying us slightly. So we're the township expressed interest in moving ahead with a different segment to start with. So we are moving to the northerly segment, which is from 24 to 25 mile uh, to begin that later this year, which will extend into 2023. And can you comment on the uh, rescinding of the board action? Yes, the uh, rescindment of the uh, item I, the previous agreement from 22 to 23 mile, is to take advantage of the fact that the township has already uh, placed some advanced deposit towards that segment of roadway um, and forward that to the segment that is going to be done this year, which is 24 to 25 mile. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Kraft. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hi, Scott. The, the section from 22 to 23 the delay, is that an indefinite delay? Is that like a year delay? What's Based on our, uh, our most recent information, we're hoping to have that settled by the end of this year. Um, there was uh, a, a partner in one of the properties that had passed away and it had gone into arbitration. So once they get all that hashed out, um, we're hoping to be able to move forward with the, the right of way acquisition that we need there. Perfect, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Seeing no other speakers, please vote. Commissioner Song, your vote didn't come through for me. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Song votes yes. Thank you. Whoops, motion passes 11 to 0. 
Thank you very much, Scott. I appreciate you coming in on this Thank great you. day. Uh, next item up is eight. Uh, a, it's basically correspondence from the City of Sterling Heights. Notice about a public hearing. I'd like to have a motion to receive and file. So moved by Hall. Support by Van Sickle. Yeah. Oh, Commissioner Matusik. I was curious as well. I did notice there was many people listed that received it. So either staff or Chair Brown, if you, either one. Yeah, I haven't either. So. Well, the, it affects the county tax roll. We, were, we received taxes from that piece of property, and they're apparently going to do something that will, could reduce our taxes that we receive. We, could, we have the right to comment on it if we feel there's an objection. Other counties, like Lapeer County, they really contest every special assessment district that goes on in the county, any little thing that goes on affects their tax well, they actually have a hearing in their board and they scrutinize it because, you know, they don't want to lose any money. And uh, historically around here, you know, we let the local communities do what they need to do and we don't intercede. But maybe if there was a huge project, maybe like an Amazon or something that came in, it would affect the taxes somewhere, maybe we could comment on it. But we're just a party to the tax rate. And so they're, they're required by law to notif notice us what's going on. And uh, that's why you've seen the, there was one in St. Clair Shores not long ago also that was similar. So Thank you for the explanation, Chair Brown. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I appreciate the question. Seeing no other speakers, please vote. Motion passes 11 to 0. Thank you very much. Uh, item number nine, commissioner's comments. See no speakers. <laughs> nope, seeing no speakers. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Batuzek. I, like I would just like to bring to uh, people's attention that um, one of our former colleagues passed away last week, Sharon Geyer. Uh, Sharon served on this, the Mount Clemens City Commission on this board, uh, was also a state representative, was uh, head of the uh, State Office on Senior Services, uh, in addition to being a volunteer and very involved in the community. And she passed away last week, and her husband actually passed away yesterday. Um, they had been married a very long time. So if we could just do a moment of silence for a former colleague. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for that, Commissioner. Commissioner Song. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Commissioner Matusik, for bringing that up. Hi, everybody. It's good to be back. I feel like I've been gone for a year. Um, I almost forgot how to get here, so, and uh, you know I just. The pass to get in the garage? What's that? Did you forget how to use the pass to get in the garage? No, I, I remembered to bring my badge. I just <laughs> forgot how to get here from home, because um, I've been doing a lot of walking and riding the shuttle. Um, as you all know, I was in Boston for uh, three weeks at uh, a Harvard Kennedy School, so I'm officially now a, a alumni. And uh, just wanted to share just quickly my experience. Um, certainly would love to talk to you guys one-on-one. -on -one, but uh, it was uh, certainly a life-changing experience. And I met um, a lot of wonderful people across the country, uh, as well as um, from Ireland, Canada, different places, people who work in different uh, backgrounds, law enforcement, uh, city, township managers, a nonprofit uh, executive directors, and it was just a great experience. I went with uh, Clinton Township trustee uh, Tammy Patton, as well as Teresha uh, Rich, who's a former city council person from Farmington Hills. And so the three of us um, from the Michigan cohort, uh, we had an awesome time. It was a lot of a lot of hard work. Um, I'll, be, I'll be honest, though, I came back with more questions than answers, and um, certainly questioning my perspective and uh, my outlook on things um, and I hope that you know that certainly uh, makes me a better person uh, in, in serving this board with all of you so I'm really glad to be back. 
Thanks. Welcome back, Vice Chair Song. Hey, welcome back. Commissioner Romano. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Excuse me, just a short comment. I'm sure all of us are aware of some correspondence going on between um, our executive and our Macomb County prosecutor, and I think it would behoove all of us um, to leave it at that, uh, personal comments to the paper uh, or to news commentators or whoever I think should be mute. Um, if we have any comments, I think we should direct them to our board chair and let him take care of it at that point. That's all I have. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Seeing no other questions or comments. Uh, to adjourn. Actually, actually, excuse me, Commissioner. Item number 10, public participation. <laughs> and seeing no public participation, we're on to number 11. <laughs> Motion by Romano, support by Zinner. Please vote. Motion passes 11 to 0.